Good evening all. How are you all doing? How is everybody doing? Evening to you. Let's uh, say hello to everybody. Uh, how is sound and audio, if you can, please? Sound good, great. How are you, Stephen? Marius, good to see you. Justin Newsom, David, hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the confirmations. I appreciate it. Um, so, coming from you to from sunny St. Louis, where you know, it's probably 36 degrees, very, very humid. Um, and it is still middle of the day here. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I know it's late in the evening for those in the UK and general European area. And I know it's even later in the evenings for those uh, further east. But let's do a quick update with you. I don't want you to feel unattended to. We need to catch up with what's been going on with crypto and maybe a little wee wee little look at some of the other elements uh, that have been going on in the markets, such as uh, one or two currencies as well. If there's that interest from you on the forex side, we want to have a keeper an oar in there. Remember, it does sometimes tie up and play a role in understanding cryptos and cryptos have been a bit off the majors have anyway let's have a look at ethereum i want to talk to you about why i think ethereum is going to go lower you're probably sick and tired about ethereum going lower but i'm afraid it is uh been a bit of a bear for a while you've got to remember what it's done those were the 50s remember how it was flat and low for a long long time those were the 12 dollar days back here seems like a long time ago that was 14 uh, and then when was it 14 it was February 17 February this year you could have had ethereum for $12 and now you're complaining that it's $1.99 uh, anyway what goes up too quick can blow off and I think this has been from this HVF and one big massive blow off but could set up a great an incredible uh, HVF first impulse. Imagine that. The deeper it comes, the bigger the eventual target we get. If we get a new low, run a 170, that we set up again and we run a new low, let's say we get something that comes close to this funnel level down here. Think about the amplitude that creates. If we then got a move, Potentially with overperformance like that, where could she go? 600 next. So while it's bearish now, it doesn't mean it's forever. But let's catch up with what's gone on. We broke out of this channel. So let me drop the time frame to something a little bit more social. You know the history now. This is classic macro to micro. Note how we re-remind ourselves where we have been. It's to make sure you retain the big picture everyone moaning about how can it still be down on ethereum look how much it's done at 199 200 dollars it is still relative to 12 dollars some insane amount up absolutely insane keep perspective keep perspective it's got scope to go lower and still be insanely up i do think this is when we got a bit we flexed and got a bit parabolic that HVF here was a key key moment that for those of you the Polynex and the Kraken you actually had a dip here in around the 90s where it was run all the way down denial of service from that point it just went parabolic absolutely parabolic that was huge it was absolutely huge. So, since the highs, which I think on the Polynex, this is Tether, by the way. So, we are looking against the dollar, but it is not the perfect dollar. It's the Tether. You were at 408.5. We know about that first inverted HVF in a new trend. Warning us, 
about it going down. Remember the blow-off moment. Everyone hating me on YouTube, but I first started suggesting here that it should be a sell. After this uh, setup and going up, it's going to go, and it went one higher up. We thought at some point the reverse. We got the first inverted HVF up there at 320, down to 202. Next inverted HVF, 260, all the way down to there. That was a little wind-up as well. 140. We have already traded 140. Question is, will this lead to a lower low? It's just implying a 170 target. But it is a first inverted on a rally trend. So it could overperform. Where's the support? 90s. That would be a give back of the whole game. Not sure we have to do that, but we could do that. This to me was the, uh, a bit of a defining moment, but people could argue that it started going pretty fast up from these levels here. This was my first setup. I bought in at 46. So it could run that and come down here. Melt up 46 to 99. Nice little 2x. I remember it. So it's good to have a play. On these bigger time frames. Because this will also give you a reminder of where the levels would be. The next levels were around here. Let's draw them. The game is to draw. The game is to draw. It's like a goal. A goal unwritten down is just brain food. It's gone and it's forgotten. Written down, stuck on your computer on the door or your morning mirror and seen every day and prompted in your mind every day different kettle of fish go and draw so we draw so uh, this is the big picture let's get it uh, now that we've just captured those levels let's extend them a bit into the future so we've got them so we are still some way up from those levels poor ethereum not so poor ethereum so let's have a look now in here and what happened we got a rally and we got a melt up out of the channel called it the channel freudian slip of channel and tunnel Let's start dropping into here so that we can bring this to the here and now. Upside grind line, melt away from grind line, smash down through grind line rally. That is a little blow off run in a, a rally. Mini little counter cycle there, that whole thing. A dip, an attempt, and then a high rise, high slung and we could argue, I've done it, drawn it the HVF way, but if you just draw the grind line, there was a grind line through that. So the lows on a steep rising ascending grind line, while the, the highs came down, down and down. I need to probably get more detail and drop a time frame again so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So down we come. That's your low one. That's your high one on a first inverted. We thought it could be up. But actually I'm a bit angry with myself. I should have been thinking about the high rise. I thought it could be both. I drew both. But I, I think I posted the upside one. High steep. Quite strong sell off. High steep. Fairly strong sell off. Big dip across the highs. There to there to there. You see it's getting steeper. Steep rise and then flattening. So that is your H3. And that is your L3. But you'll see there's more drawing in there. There is more drawing in there. We are always looking for a primer. Primer, primer, primer. Let's just draw that line while we're seeing it and enjoying it. It is a thing of great beauty. Now initially that was looking like it could be a setup. Um, and it kind of just broke up. It's just 
Bleh. So that is sometimes something that can happen. But let's go have a look at this primer and finish this. So we always look in funnels for a primer. And let me just show you the annotated draw because it's, I've made an effort to make it a little bit more clear. So in preparation for this webinar and touching on Ethereum, the 1 is also the 3 low. In other words, the primer shares the final inflection points. They are overlapping. That is the 1, that is the 3 uh, in the macro pattern and it's also the first low and the first high of the primer that's the second low and the second high of the primer look at that weak rally and fairly straight down three and then that weak rally three there now you couldn't have realistically and I'm not for a minute suggesting while it was here and just turning down there being confident about putting your stop at that rally three because it could have gone a candle higher and it would have been run you could have, however, put it at the 2 or the 1 and shorted earlier and got in there. And that spill would have given you great comfort. You would have got that extra bit of profit. And by now, if you had put the stop on the 1 or the 3 macro, these are both the same points, just labeled twice because they are being utilized by both the micro and the macro pattern. So remember, primer is just a HBF that occurs in a funnel that is a further squeezing of an already squeezed pattern. Really was trying to hold the 230 level, couldn't. So your funnel ends up just shy of the 230, breaks the 220 as confirmation of trade. They had just traded through. Key levels of significance just run. 220. Your three low was a 220. What do you do? You run and you get to key levels that were before. Previous funnels. See that previous funnel from before? rally also first interim was run so if we draw a line let's just show you where the first interim was first interim is always from three high to three low so there's the three low there's the three high and you would have been from the midpoint of the funnel so there was your first interim and shock horror surprise key level of significance and round number and very close to the low end of that funnel so just run just rally just run just rally and then spill down so now we are churning we are churning with a rally up failing to make the 210 again but quite spiky and then less so and then less so on the upsides and I think the next move is going to be down and it's all occurring at the magic number of and the interim second interim this is classic in other words interim levels are levels where you expect adverse price behavior churn loss of time without further gain pushback pullbacks against your PL, lots of price churn and no real progress this is your progress this is your capitulation stage by the way that was your second chance you ran the 210 on that wick so let me just move that camel now so you can see you touched your first interim you ran the 210 second chance to the funnel you could have entered second chance even after this breakdown you just put a sell limit and wait for it to come and get you after the first interim run it breaks so you could have still sold from there down there up down and it broke the grind line on the churning of interim level two he says Yes, it has broken the grind line on the churning of the interim level 2, which is that which the wise man speaketh. Good comment. Um, and, of course, we did have descending highs, which also were broken, but then failed to follow through on. You can see there that broke through that. So you did have a kind of a squeeze there, but there was no real move. Normally you would have expected to have done one or the other up or down and just fizzled. That's not good for the bull case because it might have been a counter push. But the last grind line to break is the one along the lower. So next move when it gets momentum. It was nice that it was squeezing because then you get the possibility that it gets an impulsive move. But it just broke up. It just went a little bit higher than that one. Do you argue that it was like that? Possibly. In other words, that wasn't a key level um, inflection point, possibly. 
but then some could try and make out that this lower grind line, if you apply a logic in one sense, maybe you're still in the lower grind line, you see. So it depends on how you draw. It's still getting those three pretty much right and holding on there. So who knows? Who knows? That's just a little complexity that failed to make a high. Um, so there's a couple of ways you might draw that. So you don't want to get too strongly on that. We might have broken the grind line, um, but it does depend on your draw. I think we have, and I think it's broken it with that sell. That was probably the strongest selling we've had since these last two, which are in the early stage. And then you've rallied back to the grind line. So I think that's probably the best. But remember, there's many ways to view these things. So Ethereum, weak for me. If you are still holding Ethereum, firstly I would ask why. Secondly, I would say there's downside potential to continue on balance of probabilities. Could it just go up and smash both these funnels? Absolutely it can. Not necessarily though, the probability option. Not necessarily the probability option. Which brings us to big brother Bitcoin which has had a little bit of a bid bounce back. So we've looked at that, what time frame we dropped right down to the hourly. So Bitcoin, we remember where we're at. I can always remind you, it's got a lot longer history. I think this is quite a reasonable probability of a major beautiful continuation pattern forming here. And until the market shows me it's inaccurate, the assumption is keep on keeping on. If you have not fully watched the 18 steps to a lifestyle trader, listen to what Brett tells you. He's got more info out of it every time he watches it. I think the guy's watched it about five or six times. It is that kind of a thing. Please go watch it and complete it and watch it again and watch it once quickly through. Watch it once with a pen in hand, writing things down to see if you get all your questions answered. Um, Watch it again and again. As you get smarter, different higher level points will stick. While uh, in the beginning you'll be picking up the basics and the lower level points. It is content rich. Anyway, long and short of this is keep on keeping on. The assumption is this is an expansionary market. Hence why I showed you the long term chart. Since your dot with it just going up. It's an expansionary market and the assumption is continuation. Just the patterns do get bigger because the amounts are getting bigger. If we logarithmically scale this and then look at um, the older time frames, you will recognize that these periods look bigger and it looks a little bit less parabolic. So it's not abnormal to have a continuation, a big continuation pattern. This was a very broad one, not nearly as pretty as I think as the one we're getting here. Because it kind of trended from low 1 to its H2. Then it went real quiet there and it was very steep ascending. So it wasn't a pretty pattern. And there was a small bit of um, falling wedge in there. You had a similar sell-off there, slightly better maybe, but still not as pretty as what I think we're getting now. So generally, this keeps giving continuation patterns. This looks like one of the best we've had. That rejection at the 1851 with such momentum is going to hold us in good stead for the bull scenario, providing we get a graduated sell-off. I still think the 2250 level, roughly where we are, to somewhere between 21 and 24. 350 is going to be a nice place for a relative low too. That doesn't mean it has to give it us. We don't want a particularly steep ascending one where everyone's too bullish. It's okay if everyone's a bit nervous right now. We don't want to set up like that ideally. A lot of them have been. So it's no bad thing that there will be a bit of nerves kicking around if we can get a deeper dip because then we get a more symmetrical pattern. A more symmetrical pattern. That is just fabulous when you get a more symmetrical pattern. So, good little sell-off down to here. So, what does that mean for the alts? At the moment, when Bitcoin is selling off, it's dragging the category down. Whoops, there's, ex oh, poor old Ethereum. It looks literally like it's going right this moment. It's just been relatively weaker than all the others. Um, but with the th if this is to come, 
from 2547 down to 22, let's say, or 2250, there will be further sell-offs. So does this view comply with further sell-offs and potentially beyond 170 over performance and maybe a lower low than the 137? Very possible. Very, very possible. So I would imagine, this is not a trade recommendation, but I was, would imagine that were one to be short Ethereum, even if you were short with Bitcoin, the degree that Bitcoin goes down will be less than Ethereum by some way, and that could be a trade of some percentage gain. Because a 205 to a 140 means you've lost 30%. Uh, that's if you run, if you don't go lower than that. So, that's the majors. We want to have a look at one or two other majors. Now, people getting excited about Litecoin. My cautionary to you is this. It looked like a nice rounding bottom and it was going up and then boom, that's going on. This has head and shoulders potential. So, let's delete that. That scenario didn't occur. No issue with that. It's good to draw them and to be scenario casting. And it's great for them not to occur because you weren't trading them. You were thinking them. That's all. Are you giving me what I thought you might give me? Nice double top. Couple of reversal pattern threats here. So you had the double top there. We're not a tr average traders of double tops uh, and reversal patterns. We do observe them. And if we get an HVF in conjunction with them, we will not ignore it. So I would take the round line here as neckline. 18. Would I go right at the very top? I'd take the logical point where both of them run, so that's about 2140. The nearest round number, you could be a little bit more conservative and just say it's a 21er. What's that round number? It should be 21. Is it 21? It should be 21. You should be 21. Yeah, so 21 to 18. So that's a three dip. And I don't think that target's been made yet. Let's have a look. So this is Litecoin, another pretty significant coin. Actually, it was. See, if you do it the HVF way and you recognize the key levels of significance instead of the traditional technical analysis way, you make the money where no one else does. You get out on the low of the wick. But I think it will come past there again. Because you have risk of, what other pattern do you have risk of occurring here? Just on this screen view. Even if you get a bit of support here at 16 and it does a rally up to the neckline again. What would you have risk of occurring? Answers in the chat box. Head and shoulders, says Justin Newson. Is he right? Any other b takers? Any other takers? Any more for any more? Agree. Well done, Ian. Yes, that is correct. So we would then look at what would be the logical neckline here. Again, 15 looks good. It's touched here. This could probably dip again and then rally again. It has certainly touched. It's a stretchy one because it's also just run here. Um, so it's quite a strong one. I might say you could have been maybe a little more conservative and looked at that level there, 16. Because there was a kind of a complex falling wedge, all complex one impulse there, and then a secondary impulse there, and then a little rest before we broke. Look one way, go the other way candle. So there's a funnel here just on the 16 level. So pushing this for a 15 when you've literally barely got a touch uh, there on this side, because we like our key levels of significance, I'd probably say it's quite aggressive. But if you took a head and shoulders all the way down line from the round number 21 all the way down to 16, that is an additional, remember that was at 18, this is to 16, that's an additional bear count. And unsurprisingly, 21 to 16 
um, will give you 12, 13 as a number. So you're three down and you get another, whoops, that's not the, that's not the place to put it. Sorry, I've drawn that line incorrectly. Do your draw correctly, please, Francis. The, that's where checking the maths always um, corrects you. That's it. Thought that sounded wrong. Checking the math. So that would be there. 11. That's what it should be. Because you're 21 to 16, which is 5. 16 minus 5 is 11. That would be your neckline, I would say, conservative. You guys have got some great trades here on uh, the downside. All we need would be perfect. A couple of inverted HVFs on the right shoulder. So was that? So what do you start doing? You start looking for him. If you want him, look for him. Could we have a two there? They don't have to be perfect because you've already got an enticing reversal pattern. Could you have an inversion in there? Watch out for them. Key level of significance running straight through it. Why the hell not? See the value of all these other jaws and the lines already done there? Yes, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. Litecoin. So what are we getting here? Who's detecting a theme? Am I a bull or what? Yes, legacy funnel, says Justin. Am I a bull on these major altcoins? Not really. This is all bearish modeling that I'm doing. Bearish modeling. Let's remind ourselves of the rest of the jaw. Now, they were buoyant. That was a nice rounded cup. And you did have a handle. And it never really went much past than that. I never traded and never saw the value of cup and handle patterns, by the way. So they're nice to see retrospectively and to give a nice name to. As far as making money off them... I just don't see merit. And here's a cup, a bit of a lip, a handle, and you would up to the lip, you would have been a buyer there, and you would have had a stop there, and I would be expecting to stop out soon. Doesn't matter, they, uh, they don't all fail, but I'm just not a fan of that pattern. I've looked at all patterns. Um, and the squeeze is the best. So I had drawn this as a potential HVF. Do I still see it as that? Well, it's quite interesting that this double top here has not yet run that high. So if we were to get a low two just running through there, you could still later have, an, have a big HBF. Which ties into what? Why is that interesting? Why is that interesting that he would say that? Why else might it be interesting that he would say that? So if this trades through that target and maybe even just a whisper through there and then rallies and that is still higher than that. Why is it interesting that on a bigger time frame you still might get a larger HVF? Are you hearing me okay with audio, guys, or have I gone bad? All good. Yeah, great. Uh, Citrix sometimes pops up these little red warnings. So, um, tell me what you think. Why? Why, 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 why? Why am I talking so much about this? Why is it interesting that we could be bare? Why is the, the analysis that we might have a scenario, not a forecast, a scenario, that um, we have a lower low first, so we sell off a bit first, but then still could be in the running for a bigger move up? Why is that interesting? Why is that interesting, he asks. Testing the team. What if I was to say there's five Bitcoin to be sent to you for the first person to give an answer? Would I get a response? Would I have a few people having a pitch?
Yes, it would make an RL too. Uh, and a potential upside for Litecoin. But why generally is the possibility of first a sell on a certain time frame for making a low two interesting? So you, your contribution of the RL2 burnout is a good one. Um, and then subsequently rallying and still all being in a potential bigger time frame upside HVF. Why is that? Yes, early entries are great. That's not the answer I'm looking for, but think more broadly. Think more broadly in terms of other charts, other. So remember we do many kinds of analysis. We go broad, we go deep. Very short term to forced in August. The Bitcoin. David says it. The Bitcoin scenario. The Bitcoin scenario could be very similar. This is what I want you to think. So if we're still staying in a scenario, we've already created a mental scenario of possibility for Bitcoin. And I've showed that to you as part of this. That's the scenario we're creating. We'll look on this in a shorter time frame, but we've just looked at it in terms of that. What was the scenario we're saying here? Sell off a bit for a low two, not too intense. Later, come back up and be part of a possible macro upside HVF. What are we just saying here? Could still be the game. It looks like a possible sell off for a low two. It may not make this target. It may make this one and go a little bit beyond and then fail on the big one. It may make this one and dip quite deep just on a wick. Because this had a sustained period at these levels. It's still quite low. But that's quite a high high too as well. So is Bitcoins. Quite big second impulses. Look how high this went relative to this. We are getting commonality of scenario out of certain coins here. With the exception of Ethereum that is just relatively underperforming immensely. We can probably do more of the downside and less of the upside for now until that changes. That's why it's interesting for me. So we, 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 we look at where all the coins are relative to each other. See, that's the day. Let's put it on the four hourly and squeeze it up. It's harder to spot when it's like this because you can see all the sub patterns, but remember the big picture. So if Litecoin sells off and Bitcoin is also selling off, they could come down here. Litecoin could be selling off too during this period. Yep. Lost you all? No? So who wants to look at something else? A bigger coin? An another big coin? Let's have a look at... Why not we just take a run past Dash? See, test our, test our hypothesis. Test the hypothesis. don't like this it's relatively held up better than the others but that was round the highs since then mm, been a bit dull a bit soft let's put it on the same time frame as the others that was four hour pretty dense been holding up but not special this is dash to bitcoin by the way not to tether so always be aware of what we're looking at i think there's underperformance for most of the majors altcoins for the next foreseeable period i think past first of august I don't think this will have bottomed by 1st of August. But 1st of August is not far away. We're 27 today. We will run 31. 
and then we will be first of August. It's not a long way away. I think I think we can bottom out. This first impulse was quite big. This second impulse can bottom out somewhere over here. That could be, you know, first, second week of August. So I think the first August, everyone is very focused on the first of August. I think that could just trigger a bit more of the selling on the down leg. I'm not sure it's going to be received particularly well. It would spoil our HVF a little bit. And it will probably represent a bit of a shock if slightly preemptively early here we break up. Unless this comes down quite quick. So we scenario casting what's going on with this fork. If that came down really fast to there and then 1st of August was good news. I wouldn't really want that. Why wouldn't we want that for the technical pattern? Then good news. Why wouldn't we want that for the technical pattern? Testing the team. Who gets the five Bitcoin? First correct answer. Won't get it because I'm just not throwing that kind of money around. But anyway, you will get honored and mentioned. Why wouldn't we want that level of move to a symmetrical, quite low 2100-ish level, 2050 level, by the 1st of August, in other words, in a short time frame? Why, why would it not be great, the best event for the pattern? If we want our... The sell momentum would be big. It would be a steep downside. It could invalidate the pattern with scenario. It's possible. If it ran the low, it would invalidate it. But what, what's the final, the word I'm not hearing that I most love to hear? Who was on last theory weekend? I gave you the default answer for 50% of every question I ask. The default answer just parrot read this word and you're going to get the answer correct 50% of the time every time I ask a question and no one's got it yet although I'm seeing some phrases flowing along here why wouldn't it who yes Ian volatility the whole idea of the pattern is we want the volatility to be slowly dissipating. A very abrupt move that achieves a big sell-off in a short time frame implies expansive volatility to the downside. As we are moving through this pattern, we want the volatility to dissipate. We've got a sell-off here. We don't want anything more vicious as a sell-off than the strongest sell-off we've already had in the pattern, which is a combination of these two sell-offs. Because this entire down leg is essentially a sell-off event here, a grind line squeeze, and another nasty sell-off event here. I don't want another nasty sell-off event a full cycle later in this pattern. That's what I was saying here. We want to grind sell-off. We want to take our time. So if the 1st of August turns out to be the news-based triggering event, and it is... I am hoping, and hope doesn't do anything for you, but I would like to see that the largely, the, by the time the 1st of August event has come in, a lot of that has worked in its price and it's kind of bought in. So you might even get a weak rally or a weak sell-off or a weak rally, but largely you grind down. In that it's not the huge watershed moment that shocks everybody um, and they all react like chickenless heads. Because we are wanting the volatility to dissipate. A lot of what was here was based on the uncertainty of how the game would break down. And, the, and as we're getting closer and more baked into this event, people are more clear on how it's going to pan out. They're certainly more clear on the, the options that are remaining on the table and which one's probabilities are higher uh, and more likely. And I can't keep up with those fundamental events. There's much better guys for talking about that sort of thing than me. Um, Jason King, uh, excellent, excellent. Um, and others, Brad, uh, the, the guys from Alphabet, they're really top-notch. Other levels that are interesting that we should remember to draw. Neckline 4. 
an inverted he uh, head and shoulders. I'm not sure this one was made. I don't think it was. But the lower one down here that we called was. And it took us up to this neckline. So there's some interesting key levels of significance. So we could run this, rally, churn, and then spill. You could get very similar to here. Remember, this also has funnels. And on the correct platform, this made its downside target. And then rallied like a beast. Low one, low two, low three. As a funnel level. So if you're wondering why we're churning and not up to much right now, right there's your answer. Let's take some of these lines out that are just general sketch lines because it's getting busy here. So we'd rather there wasn't a steep sell off, and we think there won't be because we're going to get stuck in funnels and uh, necklines. And that is the take on Bitcoin. So a little bit of churn, but then eventually some more downside. But the least bad of the majors like Ethereum and Ripple I don't like. We haven't spoken about Ripple. That was the Canadian dollar. So Dash is a bit non-committal. It's not done badly relative to Bitcoin, but it's quite a feeble in relation to this blow off sell off it's quite nondescript chart this it's not particularly interesting lots of wisp wispy uh, spikes relative strength but that could also have the building of a grind line under it and a potential sell off there's a risk of rising wedge in all of this So a bit of a bit of a whiff of rising wedge in there. I just don't like that. You know, there's it's not strong on the upside. In these wheat grinding, you often get da da da. So not a fan, not a fan of dash. So ripple, ripple, ripple. We'll say goodbye to the CAD USD. Go have a look at this chart. Paste it on Basecamp, by the way, for those that want a little bit of FX as well. I think someone was asking about it. That's why I went and looked at it on the uh, WhatsApp group. And I think it was a good spot. I think he mentioned an HVF. Nice one. Continuation. Look, you get the fast move. When you're on leverage, that's the bit you want. Gets a bit churny. Gets a bit churny. But did have more overperformance. Bit of a channel grind. You break out of the channel grind. So interesting little case of example on that. Well done to Ian for calling volatility. Remember, volatility is the answer to 50% of all questions. It's your default answer. Just say volatility. Preferably think and ask why I might be referring to it, but hopefully the explanation that followed gave that to you. So I'm going to keep my CAD chart. I'm a bit attached to it now with all those lovely little lion jaws. Let's upload him and let's see if we can get another trading view up. What would you most like me to have a look at? We will do a quick run past metal while we wait for that. Don't like this. Don't like this on metal, by the way. It could be I'm starting to do little, little uh, modeling for possible inverted. That was nice and up. That was quite steep down, but supported on a funnel. That was a squeeze. But then this got really grindy weak. Um, and um, that is not a good piece of price action. That starts to fall into. And unfortunately, I think... Even alts and alt miners, miners, when I say miners, I mean minor, N O R, not M I N E R S. We're not talking about mining ever, generally. This could set up a slight inverted. Doesn't have to, but it's potential there. This was an ugly selling leg. This is an ugly selling leg for this chart. ugly selling leg. Take a picture of it.
that not good grindy 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 not good so not all amazing but uh, the confidence in metal fundamentally hasn't gone but technically this is not particularly uh, attractive uh, trade behavior no way of spinning it any different and I know some of you are in it we do have this little wee funnel here on a micro uh, setup which will give a little bit of support it has already once and then we've got the bigger funnel of the bigger pattern and the problem we have is if you set up this kind of inverted structure just above a number of funnels is it could be a wind up to get you through see that target I've just put it somewhere in the midpoint there if that is go with the red if that is low one low two and there's some flat bottom low three after a bear flag rally bear flag rally into the downside gap often key level of significance just either closing or failing in the gap and then you get a final three there so what you could have is go away something like that um, not a pleasant scenario um, we put our gap in there again um, that too would be somewhere there uh, not not generally uh, pleasant scenario so a little bit of risk um, which means it could be more of it could be accumulated in a while so there's no reason to chase I think cryptos generally mm, I feel like I've been saying this for a long time now but mm, the majors don't excite me Are we miners uh, or in coins that are doing well generally on the bigger time frame but are showing short term some weakness potentially? I mean, there's nothing wrong with this pattern structure on the large. This is a lot better to be in. And we have run interims, both a first and a second. And there's a huge gap between second and first. That's when it goes fast. So it's dealing with, it's digesting a first interim, a little wind up pattern and uh, the second interim targets. It's dealing with that and it's digesting it and the rest of the coins are crap and volume is low and uh, this is not scary selling. There's not, so the, on the, the bullish side, don't panic sell your metal right now. That would be a very dumb thing to do. The, the, the volume isn't there. It's just unattractive price behavior on very low uh, volume. But that doesn't mean it's not dangerous and can a little lower at the moment in the current environment. Um, but that doesn't mean it's an exit, especially when you look at liquidity and costs of getting in and out all the time. So definitely sitting tight because the overall structure of this pattern is a potential 2x. But the market isn't giving you anything free and easy for nothing at the moment. That's the way the game is. A lot of guys have been had money chucked at them in the early doors of the major bull market of crypto. You just had to be in. You just had to be in anything. And you were like, well, this is three or four X, money for nothing. Thanks for showing up. Whoops. Retire out a millionaire in 18 months time. Everybody inhaling the Kool-Aid big time, big time. It's all just so damn easy. I'm so freaking smart. Um, no. It's not that kind of season on the crypto realm. Um, that's my take uh, but I think these guys will come good slow start later move still a possibility is it great that it's yeah, pulled this low back to funnel after this amount of time 
time stop remember time stop how much time are we giving ourselves for this there's should be pretty darn plenty to make target here but not forever so that's up to August <coughs> we haven't yet moved it right the way through so according to that break this will be should be doing better after certainly by the first week of August we should have much more progress to show so that is the metal cautiously bullish on the bigger time frame short term little bit of an adverse price but piece of price behavior in the context of what's going on everywhere not entirely shocking ants second chance dip into funnel and now re-rallying looking slightly sexier and this was a proper triggering event guys look at that volume go away go away um there it is there's your break first interim run dip to funnel rounded bottom in the funnel and recovering not bad considering how weak the market is is a low slung pattern but i still think it's got a decent chance a lot of the low slung cryptos have performed um well especially if we go from max pessimism to even just being moderately bullish again so again the august will reach out this has a longer time frame on it so then the metal and that time frame projected forward so it's from the break forward you can see that that's going to be a long long way so we'll be able to we'll have plenty of time still for that that's only roughly 50 percent or two-thirds of the line uh, how much of it are we using there yeah we got about another third beyond this for time uh time frame um so and also slow start low slung to be expected good funneling though proper triggering event has to be said unless we end up calling this later uh, a high three but this i think has done enough to do the 50 percent of a high three so let's just check that have we done our draw correctly always check draws that's your high two down to low two That guy is really irritating. <laughs> Just throwing all his stuff in the way. Come on. It's the notifications that are irritating. He's just posting his charts. Fair play to him. Um, so did we get uh, a full 50% rally? We could argue no. Um, we didn't. Um, because it hasn't done the 50. But we were letting it be a possible H3. On the basis that everything in this pattern was low slung so that's a rule waiver it's dangerous when you start doing that it's not quite 50 there's the 50 so who's following what i'm talking about let me just branch this out so we're just looking at the second impulse um it had a very deep dip down even though it was never as violent as this but that hasn't made the 50 but we called it that it had a bit of volume on it that looked like funneling and then we said great h that's again failed to break that and then dipped down so it looked like it was a testing and then that clearly is a triggering event so it does look like it's treated that as an h3 you might later at a later point if you started to get um, more funneling here and it started to treat this as an h3 and come back respect it pull back bounce set a primer up and all of that you might then say hang on maybe this is the, the h3 and we've actually ended up with a more symmetrical setup so this is the slight fuzzy logicness element of the jaw you have to be prepared to review your jaw but that with that volume and that move that certainly smells like a triggering event and i think i've done a chart for that so for now that's our scenario so in terms of ans and metal those are my takes slightly better from ans than metal at the moment 
um, but they're both good structure patterns. Metals overall, bigger time frame structure is actually better. It's not as low slung. That's a virtually a 618 and it had a very strong support level here, the 14s. Possibly didn't draw as deep as it, you might have wanted it to do, which may be the reason why it's a little soft now. I'm going to just draw a little bit deeper. Some of the scared money got a chance to get out, um, and there's some value buying deeper down. We might have done well, but that's also preserved the structure of it in terms of Yeah, it's not nearly as low slung as A and S on the macro level. So uh, we've run 50% and halfway to 61.8 over here. And we didn't dip deep at all here. We stayed in the yellow zone. We never touched the red. And we are already in the 50. We're trading right now at the 50% level of the whole pattern. While in A and S's case, we're still sub that. So if we do that. But there was a massive blow off in ANS's case. So quite a lot of I'm doing quite a bit of fib structural analysis. We haven't got to 50% here at the moment. We're still sub 38.2. We haven't even touched 50 since the break. So that's that's where metal has the edge in terms of symmetry of pattern, but just a bit softer right now. Guys, that's a quite a full-blown crypto analysis. We never got a chance to look at the dollar, and the time is virtually up. How are you doing? What would you? What do you want me to do? Do you want to take a question or two? Do you want me to have a look at any one currency? Why don't we do one FX so that we don't? You know, we still do FX. We don't. Uh, we haven't run away from it. Who's got a currency they'd like to look? I, the dollar's been weak. What would you like um, currency-wise? Throw it out at me, and I'll cover it. Let's do one. Or any other questions? Any other business? A O B. Any other business? Fine gentlemen of the jury. Esteemed gentlemen. Knights of the realm. <laughs> Excellent. I, th I think our day is coming back for crypto and it's not yet here. Okay, Stephen, thank you. Um, I'll let you go. Off you go. You are excused. Fine, sir. Thank you. Uh, and we'll see you on the boards. Uh, keep participating up there. Do that stuff, guys. If you can put your draws up, participate and reply to each other's. What I want is a self-teaching community. Show what you've learned. Teach what you seek to learn. You know? Uh, that's something that Brett has really taken on board and is making um, awesome uh, gains uh, in his own trading with talking about his skills uh, and HVF theory to others and imparting the knowledge because that's when you almost all communication is bi-directional. You reteach yourself and you feel a hypocrite if you haven't done something and you go and fix it. Um, so it's very, very, it's very good discipline. Um, let's do an FX. I'll choose one if I'm not getting one from you. Um, that is, I will probably, why not let's do a cable, because pound has had its own dramas, dollar has been weak, and I think the pound is actually back above the 130 mark. Um, rumor has it. And we were insinuating bottoming, if you remember, a while ago after this failure. But very, you know, nothing too drama and dramatic based bottoming. More a kind of, yeah, working its way a little bit better. But, but no fireworks. I think it's been helped by a fair amount of um, dollar weakness. Was a bit of a sell grind there that begets a future line and we have a bit of a grind line here on the upside so there's another dip in it for the pound on balance of probs as well see that slight amount of squeezing in there as well so you've got a little bit of a rising wedge and it's selling off quite abruptly where previously it was grind selling can you see that 
This is what we're doing. We're reading the tick. Listen to what I say and the phraseology I use so that you can use it too. Grind selling on a d very gradual descending grind but spiking up. That's very bullish. Grind selling. And now we've got spike selling off after the last spike selling up. And we've got a little bit of a pinch on. So we churn in here a little while longer at some point a dip. Some point a dip. So that's the pound. That's my take. Um, do we have a bigger time frame for you? Um, we did have a kind of potential. Whoops, let's get rid of the lines. Uh, we did have a kind of potential for... By the way, remember, this was a key level. This was our funnel on the inverted that we traded on the way down. So that is also another reason. It's quite good that we've got above that. Key level of significance, just run there with that spike. You see, you just went through it, you tested it, came back. That was your H3. That was all part of the inverted we traded on the downside some while ago now. Well documented on Basecamp and a very steep sell off to its final sell three there. We have a midpoint there. So this is funnel level and it's going to be a bit sticky and churny and difficult muddy patch to cross for the wagons to get over. So yeah, I can see a little dip and churn and mucking around. These, this, these levels are going to be thick. Uh, for the pound, but when it properly gets above that, that's going to be a nice layer of support. That is GBP USD. I hope that was useful, gents. You've been a very silent bunch. I hope that's uh, been helpful and given you the update you need on crypto. Um, we will be doing a full number of hours. We'll probably get um, two hours in on non farm day, that is Friday. August the 4th, the next time we meet, Friday, August the 4th, we will watch both FX and crypto and we'll do all of that. And I will be doing some YouTubes. So hope that's been useful to you. Bearish crypto, build up your fiat. What's the takeout? Build up your fiat, get it into the accounts. Don't panic by anything right now. The majors particularly stay out, they're going to get cheaper. Put some cheeky orders on any weakness, potentially on metal and ants, to buy below the market levels on any sell-offs. Those are still looking um, reasonable, but also feeling a little bit of the weight of the general crypto realm. Um, so this is a time for bargain hunting and accumulating your cash in your exchange accounts, being, once again, tether, you know. Um, is it, 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 I hate to say it because we're here for crypto, but it just hasn't been the bull. It hasn't been um, the dominant bull market yet. Um, were there any flyers? Final check port of call that I didn't do. Market cap, coin market cap. Who's the flyers? I don't think it has the same depth. And I think they vary and a lot of them will be what is known as the small coins. Um, Things very mixed bag against the dollar. NEM, that's a good performance there. And it's a good company. Good company, it says good coin. Um, and Monero is a good coin. Not uh, up today, but it has been doing fairly well as well. Important note that um, Monero is probably the one with to pass the highest secrecy test. When a guy was uh, seized, they couldn't get their hands on his Monero. So yeah, a bit of a mixed bag. No real uh, streakers, and even the ones that are up steam, they've been coming off quite a bit. So, it's quite a lot of commonality. Anyway, that's it. Guys, thank you for your attention and time. Um, I'll get a recording up. Um, it will take a while. It will have a password. It'll be a Vimeo clip. It'll go in the same post as where the events was. That's your update versus uh, the market. This is Francis saying thank you very much and catch up with you all. No need to rush. Accumulate your cash, build it up, get ready to buy some bargains in a while. But longer run, looking optimistic for Bitcoin and possibly even the likes of Litecoin later for upside HVS. But first to sell off. That's my take. Good night, good night, good night and enjoy yourselves.